Requesting connection. Established. Encrypted. We're live. The show you've been asking for. Advice, technology, and community. Linux first, all others second. This is Ask Noah. Live from Multispeed Technologies, the Ask Noah show starts right now. This is the show where we came to do all the things on Linux they said couldn't be done and take your questions on how to do the same. The phone lines are open this hour to be a part of the program. It's a free call, 1-855-450-NOAH. That's 1-855-450-6624 or send an email to live at asknoahshow.com. My name is Noah Chalai. I am your host. Delighted to be here with you this hour as another episode of the Ask Noah show kicks off. Thanks for joining us. We're delighted to be here. We uh, are, are thankful to our friends at a studio uh, just a couple miles south of here that are letting us hang out in here today to do the show. Uh, we've got an exciting show lined up for you. We really do. Um, a lot of people are going to be joining us remotely. and uh, But of course, your calls go to the front of the line. So with that, Brandon from Ohio joins us. Hey, Brandon, welcome to the Ask Noah Show. Hi, thanks. Hey, Ed, how can we help? Um, so I have a, a small business question. Um, I have a wide area of expertise in IT and programming. Okay. So I started my business uh, four years ago. Um, I have enough work to keep me busy full time as well as nights and weekends lately. Uh, but if I hired somebody full time, my projects would probably be finished in just a few months. <clears throat> so I work out of my house and I'm not really thrilled about somebody coming to my house every day for work. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, how best to grow from here. So do I, you know, go and, and try to grab a, a place to establish a, a business location and then hire? Do I try to do both of those things at the same time? I, I guess I'm curious as to how you got started. Yeah, for sure. So um, first things first, I would not uh, I would not take out a loan or anything like that um, to pay somebody. The, how you deter, really what you're asking, it's a question of growth. How do you grow or when do you grow? When is the time to grow? And so how you answer that question is, it's, it's a math question, really, because what it amounts to is anytime you're going to bring somebody on, and it doesn't really matter what you pay them. It could be $15,000 a year part-time. It could be $30,000 a year. It could be $70,000 a year. It could be $200,000 a year. The math question is, do they bring in more money than they cost you? And so y- you have to get to a point in your business where you've got enough work to completely fill your time plus the completely fill their time. Right. And so if I'm understanding where you're struggling and it's, and I, I ran across the exact same thing where you're struggling is it's like, how do I work the full-time job of two people? Well, really I I have to work a full-time job of one person and then continue to work a part-time job all the way up until I get to a full-time job for a second person. That's kind of what you're struggling with. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I went through that exact same thing. And I, I don't know that this is, I'm not saying this is necessarily the best way to do it, but I'll tell you what I did. What I did was I looked at, I, I looked at, I looked at Alta speed technologies. I said, okay, here, so here's where we're at with this. I, the, the full-time work, the actual day to day going out and installing access points and fixing networks and repairing POS systems and all of that, that stuff that anybody can do. I can train up. I can train anybody to do that. Anybody that has a skill. And so we hire, we trained somebody who hired somebody, uh, that was with us very early on. He started as a, he started doing some part-time stuff. He was in college at the time and he started doing some part-time work, which allowed me to free up a little bit of my time. We were kind of splitting the, the, the full-time job half. So each of us kind of had a part-time job. Um, and then eventually what I did was when I brought him on full-time, I went to more of, as an administrative role type thing. And so what I started doing was I started dealing with uh, sales and uh, customer relations and quality control. And so my job day to day at that point was I would go to these clients and I would ask how things are going. What can we help you with? What do we need to change here? Where can we serve you? And it's, they'd say something like, well, actually, now that you're here, there is this one thing that we need done. And uh, and then I would pass it off to the, the guy's name was Matt. I'd pass it off to Matt. And I'd say, could you go take care of this? And then he would go in there and take care of that. And that's kind of how I made that transition. And then, of course, as we continue to grow, from there on, it was easy. We either brought part-time people on as we had part-time work or full-time people on as we grew to full-time work. Um, but that's kind of what I did. And, and, the, and, the, and the truth is, Brandon, in that early stage, uh, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of things I was taking a paycheck for that I was not 
bringing in uh, as m- more money, as much money or more money than I was paying myself, right? There are plenty of times when I would spend four or five hours and I would go out and, and you know, do essentially not really cold sales because they were, you know, they were clients, but I would stop out there and I'd talk to them and uh, I'd just go have a conversation with them. And when I'd get back, I'd realize that we didn't actually, we didn't actually bill anything for that. And so from that perspective, probably wasn't a great business decision. And, and that's why looking back, I, I can't tell you that that was the, it's not the perfect solution. But one of the things that I, I think, it, and I struggle with this, you know, the math part of me, the nerd part of me struggles with this, right? Because, you know, the coffee pot, for example, here, we have a really nice coffee pot because I really like coffee and it doesn't make us any money. And it's not that it's, it's a particularly profitable thing. The return on investment is terrible. I just like coffee. My personal assistant, she doesn't make me any money. She doesn't make this company any money. The reason that she's on the payroll is because she makes my time more valuable and allows me to spend my time, uh, you know, more structured. And I have the memory of a goldfish. I'd get nothing done if I didn't have her around. Um, But does that kind of make sense to you? It does. Um, I, it's, it's just a little tough because, you know, um, <clears throat> it's your business and it's your baby. So nobody cares like you do. So I've brought in some contractors and things like that. And I find myself spending a lot of time just fixing their, their work. Um, so, you know, it, it's hard to find somebody that you can trust and really rely on. And it sounds like that, that was kind of a break that you found. Now you are 100% right. In fact, um, I didn't give his last name, so I, I guess I can talk about this a little bit. One one of the reasons that the gentleman that originally started with us is no longer here uh, is because we had a difference of opinion on um, quality of work, on uh, on for, for a number of different things. We had a, we had a difference of opinion, and at, at the time, I was probably harder on him <clears throat> than I would be today. And it's because I hadn't learned the lesson that you seem to have figured out very early on. So so good on you for figuring this out, but. You will never be able to pay somebody to care about your business as much as you care about your business. And that is a really gut-wrenching lesson to learn the first time because you you own your business, you will do anything for your clients. You will climb mountains for your clients. Uh, you'll move heaven and earth for your clients because you've worked hard, you've, you've clawed, and, and you've scratched to get where you are and to, to earn the, that business. And so when somebody comes by and willy-nilly niz- just kind of haphazardly does something and you look at it and you say, how could you, how could you leave in, in this particular case? It, it is infuriating. In fact, it wasn't all that terribly long ago. We had a technician, we sent him 95 miles out uh, into it to, to another business. And uh, there was, we had installed a security camera system some years ago as an analog system. And uh, we sent him out there and to replace his camera. So he replaces the camera and, uh, and he comes back. We, of course, we paid him his time. We paid him miles. Uh, and we, I think we actually bought him lunch while he was down there, too, um, because, you know, he was, it was a long trip. And, you know, 90 miles is, you know, hour and a half each way. It's three hours plus, you know, the time that he was down there. And um, so he got back. Sure, and you want to take care of your employees, definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But so he got back, and a day later I get a call from the business owner. He says, yeah, that camera isn't working again. And I said, the camera isn't working. How is that camera not working? We just replaced it. It would be weird that that thing would go out a second time. And he goes, yeah. So I, um, I went down there to myself to go look at it, and the cable, the the, um, it was uh, it was coax- coaxial cable that was there, and it hadn't been crimped, you know, tightly enough, and so that the the center conductor wasn't sticking all the way into the, this uh, this camera thing. So I called this guy up that had been he'd been with us for a couple of months. He's a relatively new guy, and I asked him. I said, um, so how was the video picture when you were down there? Because I, you know, you know, I, I knew there was no possible way this thing worked from you know when he was down there. So I said, how, how was the video signal when you were down there? And he goes, um, well, they didn't have a monitor, so I wasn't able to, uh, I wasn't able to see that, uh, to see if it was working. And, uh, you know, then we had a conversation about, you know, if you're going to do something, you go down there, we pay to go down there. You need to check that stuff, make sure that stuff works. And the, the, the good, the, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a great circumstance because the, the reason that we had let him go out on his own was because I personally knew this client, you know, we were on good terms and stuff. And so it was, a, it was a great learning ground and it was a great opportunity for me to stop and say, this is not how you do, this is not how you quality check your own work. You need to make sure, you know, you need to take all the stuff you need uh, to evaluate that stuff. And in his, you know, in his defense, he's a newer guy and he, you know, just didn't dawn on him that they might not have a monitor there for him to use. So he should bring a service monitor with him. And those are the things you learn, you know, as you go along. And, and, I, and I don't say that to throw the guy under the bus because he's, he's a great guy and he does, he's done really great work since then, but it's a learning opportunity and, and, and something that I wouldn't have missed. 
and something that you wouldn't miss. And the reason that you and I wouldn't miss it is because it's our business and we care about those customers and we treat those problems as if it were our own. And if we were going into our own home and we were going to set a security camera up for our wives, we would double check to make sure that the video is there and it's working. And, and if we couldn't figure that out, we go to Best Buy and buy a, a TV or something and plug it in to make sure it works, right? So oh, that's a really long way to say, I completely agree with you. And, and it's a really hard lesson to learn. Nobody will ever care about your business like you do. Right. So when, when you did first bring them on, did you uh, bring them in as a contractor part-time or did, you know, what did you... Which, which guy, which guy are we talking? Are we talking about the first guy or first guy? Yeah. Yeah. First guy. So yeah, it's an interesting, so it's an interesting story. I'm, I'll go ahead and admit this on the air and hopefully I don't get myself thrown in jail. But, uh, when, when I, when I very, the very first time I had him start working, he was doing part-time work and I was just paying him under the table. So I was just giving him, I, you know, I'd say, Hey, there's, there's a guy over here. And, you know, at that time we were doing really, really small stuff, you know, like uh, installing people's printers and, uh, you know, uh, fixing people's websites. And, you know, if a, a desktop went offline or somebody wanted their Wi-Fi, you know, password changed, it's just, it's simple, simple stuff like that. And, uh, and I would just tell him, I say, I'll give you 25 bucks to go over here and, and, you know, change these guys, Wi-Fi password or put this new install. They have a new network printer. They need it installed and added to all their computers. And I, I just give them 25 bucks. Uh, and so, and yeah, I, I, so here's the, here's the rule of thumb when you're paying people as contractors, the way, so there are two ways to pay people. Uh, you may know this, but somebody else may, may not. You can either have somebody as a, as a, an employee of your company, in which case you have to have all of the necessary requisite things that the state and the federal government require, like unemployment and, uh, you know, uh, workers comp and, and, and you have to withhold social security and all of these kinds of things, Right. The second way that you can employ somebody mm -hmm. is is with what we call an independent contractor. And with an independent contractor, uh, essentially the way it works for tax purposes is you just give them a lump sum of money and it is on them to figure out all the taxes for themselves. The company doesn't deal with any of that. Now, as an employer, oftentimes there is a real drive to try to hire people as independent contractors because it means that if we tell somebody we're going to give them 500 bucks, it means we can just hand them a check for $500. If we're paying them as an employee, we have to put aside the $500. Then I have to pay a team of accountants to go through and take out all of the requisite amounts and hold it. Then I have to pay more people to go and file all this stuff with the state. And then I got to pay people to send checks into the state with all this money. And then at the end of the year, we have to give all this paperwork to this employee that says this is how much we've taken out and all that. It's a real pain and it costs a lot more money. So there is a drive to try to hire people as independent contractors. Now, personally, I stay away from that as far as I can because the federal government scrutinizes people so heavily if they find that you are paying somebody as an independent contractor that should be being paid as an employee. Well, how do you know if you should pay somebody as an employee or an independent contractor? Well, the way that the federal government says that we figure that out is if it is a person that is doing work for more than one location. So in other words, let's say we're hiring an independent contractor to install Wi-Fi. If they install Wi-Fi for more than just Alta Speed Technologies, um, then they can be considered a independent contractor. They're not just working for us. They have their own business. They're doing their own things. Now, if I hire somebody to install Wi-Fi, for example, and the only place they ever get any money is Alta Speed Technologies, and the only thing they ever do is install Wi-Fi access points for us, they are not an independent contractor. The only exception to that rule is if it's some oddball thing. So, for example, if tomorrow I wanted to hire somebody to... I'll give you an example. We hired somebody to tune the board that we use for broadcasting here for the Ask Noah show. Now, this is not somebody that... He, he's, he, he is, he's aware of, of, uh, of auroral acoustic sciences, but that's not, it's not his job to go and tune broadcast consoles. That's not what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and when we paid him as an independent contractor, because it's not like we routinely tune broadcast councils, just a one thing to one time thing we need to done one time. And so we paid him as an independent contractor. Um, but that as a small business, if you can get away with doing that legally, that's what I would suggest you do is pay people as an independent contractor because it'll make your accounting much, much easier. Once you start getting into payroll, then you've got to start getting into doing quarterly reports and, and it, it just, it gets to be a mess really quick. So if you can, Pay all, ask all those employees if they're okay being paid as independent contractors and then hire people that will meet that legal definition. So in your situation, you're doing a lot of IT work and it sounds like that's, you know, usually that's on the road quite a bit. 
um, cause you're not doing it from right. a location. Right. Um, did you have a place of business that you started from a, a building or did you start out of your home and then bring people to your home to work with you or how did that work? Yeah. So when I first started, I sectioned a corner off in my basement and I took a, uh, a table that I bought of like one of those, um, one of those picnic tables that you buy, like uh, lifetime picnic tables that you buy at Sam's Club for $69. And I, I set it up in a corner of my basement right. and I called it the Alta Speed Desk. And, uh, and I bought a laptop on eBay for $75 and I set it on top of the Alta Speed Desk and that was Alta Speed Headquarters. And then I, uh, what I did for phones was I actually just signed up for a service that would forward, we would get a one, eight, the same number that we use today, actually, 402-2300, that's our local number, 701-402-2300. It forwarded all of those calls to my personal cell phone, but the number that would show up on my caller ID on my cell phone was 2300, so I knew it was a business call. And uh, there's a funny story that actually goes along with that. I uh, One of the first service calls I ever did for a business, I answered the phone, I said, Speed Technologies, how may I help you? And, uh, and she says, we need some work on our website we need we need some help with our website and we've got this web server that's here and it's not functioning we tried calling our normal it contractor and we couldn't get a hold of them and so we did some google search we came up with your name and we were wondering if you got if you have anybody that would be able to stop out and pretty early on i, I think it just kind of came naturally to me that i should always treat my business larger than it actually was because it just made me sound, it just sounded better, right? It, it, it sounded like there was more sense of a security for the client. And so I'd never use the term we, I always said, or I never used the term I, I'd always use the term we. So I'd say, yeah, uh, we'll see if we can get a technician out there. And so I hung up the phone and immediately got in my car and drove myself out to the, the, the location. And I walked in and I said, our service dispatcher, which of course was me at the time, uh, gave me a call and told me that you guys had an urgent issue and you needed me, you needed somebody out here right away. And she goes, okay. So she shows me the problem and I fixed it. Later on, I get an email, uh, back from her, not, not to know at altaspeed.com, but at support at altaspeed.com, which is where the invoice was generated from and sent from. And she said, um, your technician that you sent out, the gentleman named Noah was very polite and we really appreciate having him out here. And, uh, we have some other things that if he would be able to do, but we'd like him specifically to come out. And so I, I wrote back from the support at altaspeed.com, said, absolutely, we would love to send Noah back out to you. Let me know, you know, and so that she gave me the details. And, and over the course of, uh, of a couple of weeks, I would go out there and, and do all of these things. And, uh, and finally, uh, you know, probably six months in, she, um, she called on the phone. She recognized my voice. And, uh, and she goes, oh, you're answering the phones today. And I said, I, to let you know, there is, no, there is nobody else. I, I do everything here. I, I, I answer the phones. I send, I, I send myself out. I go do the work. I come back. I generate the bills. I send it out from you. I take the checks to the bank. I deposit them. I do the payroll. And then I pay myself. I, I, I do everything. Uh, and, and that's how it was for a long, long time. The first, you know, 2009 we started. I, and I think I did all of our, every, every single thing up until like 2011, and that's when I got involved with the, this college kid that was doing stuff part time for me. But, uh, but yeah, you know, when you're starting out, small business is just that. It's small business, and every single dollar matters, and every single client matters. Uh, and 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 so, and, and as you grow, then you, I, I still to this day, in 2018, you know, we're in a very, very different boat today than than we were back in 2009. I still appreciate that, though, man. Do we lose you, Brandon? Nope, I'm here. Uh, I'm just uh, thinking if, if everything's been answered. And I, I think so. I mean, I think that gives me pretty clear direction on, on you know, how to get started. And, and I think you're reinforcing a lot of the stuff that um, I was kind of uh, driving towards as far as, you know, finding somebody that I can depend on to kind of start things with. Because it, it's pretty rough without, you know, I mean, a lot of guys start out with a partner. And, yep. and I can just imagine how much easier that would make things, you know. Yeah, well, for a time being, and then it'll make it really hard. Very few partnerships survive. Yeah. Very few part, and I'm serious. I mean, if you look at you look in the business, you go look in any business, with the exception of doctors and lawyers, there is no partnership that, sur that virtually no partnership that survives ten years. They just don't work, and the reason it doesn't work is because eventually, at some point, y'all are going to come to a point where you say, "I want to go this direction," that guy wants to go that direction, and you just can't agree. And uh, I've had that discussion numerous times. In fact, I have I have that dis I just had that discussion two weeks ago. There's a there's a potential venture that we're that we're going to engage in, and I was talking to a gentleman that I need on board to do that venture, and he said, um, "Could we do it as a partnership?" I said, "Absolutely not. I will own it, or you will own it, 
and uh, we can split the money 50 50 but uh i will own it and you'll work for me or you'll own it and i'll work for you and i trust the guy i've known him for a long time so i don't mind how you know which way that structures in fact i left the decision to him i said you can even decide you can just decide i you 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 run it and, and you'll work for me or i'll run it but one one of us is going to own the thing and the other one's going to going to work or i won't do the deal yeah great question man i appreciate the call uh yeah no i Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hit the button there, man. I, I do appreciate the call, though. Thank you very much. Again, open phones, one 450 noah That's 855-450-6624. The email, live at asknoahshow.com. Joel calls from Vancouver, Canada. Hey, Joel, welcome to the Ask Noah Show. Hey, Noah. How are you doing, man? Excellent, man. How can I help? Well, uh, just a quick little introduction here. Big fan of the Ask Noah Show. Uh, big fan of what you guys are doing uh, down at AltaSpeed. Hey, we appreciate having you. We are, uh, it's no problem, no problem. Listen to your show every, uh, every time it comes out, every week. So, you know what? I got a question for you. Uh, actually, it's interesting. The last guy you were talking to, um, r- you know, really touched on a lot of notes that we're really going through right now. We've actually uh, started a, a small business uh, up here in the Vancouver area, um, a tech company of sorts slash managed service provider. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of, you know, we're a big fan of a lot of stuff that you guys are doing. We're doing a lot of similar things. We're, we're using, uh, like, OS Ticket, for example. We're really big on open source software in Linux. And um, one of the challenges that we run into uh, is, you know, uh, how, do, how, do you, uh, how do you pitch this thing to entrenched Windows shops? You know, there's so many shops that are just so, uh, you know, they've been, they're so used to using Windows and they've been on Windows for so long. How do we... Uh, sort of proposition the value like what is the value proposition proposition that we can give to these guys other than the fact that it's open source because uh as you know a lot of people are sort of wary when you use that term and they don't really understand how it works and that sort sure, of thing sure uh so first things first there's a there's an old saying a man convinced against his will is of the p- same opinion still right so modern english translation you can't really force anybody to do anything right if they're convinced that some they're right. they convinced something's right you're just not going to convince them uh, and so, and I wouldn't waste my time with people like that. Um, that said, yeah, we uh, we did a, a I don't know if I really want to call it a publicity stunt because it was it was it was true accurate. Um, but a couple of years ago, we went to the streets of Seattle and we went to various different establishments, not technical establishments. We're talking bars and outdoor eateries and grilling places, and uh, walked around with a camera and a microphone and just sat down and asked people, "Have you ever heard about Linux?" couple people had, a lot of people hadn't, and I said, and I just sat down and said, okay, tell me what you do on your computer. Tell me, tell me the things that you do. And, you know, we got, you know, we got a lot of the same answers that you would expect. I, I browse the internet. I write documents. I watch videos. Um, and then we asked them, what, 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 you know, what problems do you have? Well, Windows crashes or Mac OS doesn't allow me to do this, or, you know, this, that, and the other. And we started looking at those things and saying, okay, what if we could give you a solution that wouldn't cost you a lot of money, but would fix a lot of those problems? Would you be interested? And every one of those people said yes. Uh, and so, and, and I've gone and, and, and had that exact same experience with other businesses. We go into the hospitality industry all the time, which is very windows entrenched. They sell entire systems that are pre-configured with domain controllers and front end clients and, and all of these things. And we just walk in and say, okay, what do you need to get the job done here at the hotel? And how can we make that system more reliable, more secure, more robust, more flexible, and more cost effective? And in every one of those cases, Linux seems to be the solution that allows us to do those things to the point that we work with, especially some of the offices that we get really involved with. Like there's a, there's a law office that comes to mind that we work with and they were extraordinarily windows entrenched. So, so windows entrenched that I had a meeting with the owner of the firm before we took them on as a client. And I was like, listen, you guys have a lot of software. And a lot of decisions have been made in this office that I'm not comfortable with and that I don't think serve your business well. And I need yeah. to know before we sign that you have a, that you, I have a commitment from you that you're going to give us a certain amount of latitude to swap some of this stuff out because as it stands, I can't stay, I, I, I will support you as best I can. And as if problems come up, we will honor the terms of our contract, which without getting into the details basically says, if anything breaks, we're going to fix it for free after you pay us our, our monthly fee. Uh, I'll honor that to yeah. start out, but as as those problems crop up, I want the ability to to fix those things. 
and uh, and and they've been they've been in, 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 they've been incredibly accommodating to the point that we have now gotten to a point where they ask us we're putting in a new solution in one of their remote offices and they said could that machine because there's really not going to be a lot of people there to fix it if anything goes wrong but it's going to be used heavily is there any possibility to get that to work on linux and these are people that are not technical and they could care less about the technical side they just need their business to work and as we've been able to demonstrate right. time and time again that linux just does this and does it great it's, so to answer your question more more specifically how, how how do you actually sell this stuff three things one is I, I wouldn't talk about the cost at all because oftentimes that actually does more harm than good if you start saying something's free people start to associated with it with not valuable um but i would give yeah. demonstrations look look at this sit down and 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 look at this and when they start to see that you know you get the big bar along the side as it relates to unity or gnome they start to see that firefox familiar logo they start to see that chrome familiar logo those are the kind of things that are going to draw people in and say okay I, that does make a lot of sense to me that does look easy to use that does look like it's more smooth uh, than windows and then on top of that then you start to stack on well also let me explain how se linux works let me explain how the firewall system works. Let me explain how it doesn't allow execution of random binaries without elevated privileges. And you can start to explain all of those things and incorporate from a security aspect on how that grows. And then you can start to sell the side part, uh, the, the the side attack of vendor lock-in. Well, we don't, you know, you're not going to experience vendor lock-in. There is a lot of choice in this ecosystem, and that's going to allow your business to grow unhindered and without having to write a check at every turn. And and when you start getting in that, you you can it's it's a three pronged approach, but you can attack the front end side, the people that actually you have to use the stuff, the business side, the people that actually have to make this decision side, and the accountant side, the people who actually have to write the checks for this stuff. And when all of those start to move in one direction, you'll find it very very easy to to con to to convince people to say, ah, just I'll throw the rag in with Windows. Yep. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. That's great advice. Thanks, man. I appreciate the call. Again, open phones, one 855 noah That's 855-6624. The email, live at asknoahshow.com. Make your voice heard, become a, of the program. Um, I want to actually go to our email system here. Um, actually, let's do this. I have uh, we, We've got our guest here that is, is lined up. He's going to be joining us. Uh, Ludwig Goon is a gentleman that reached out to me, and he said, I have some information that I think your listeners would find valuable. A lot of people go into the market and they're always talking about which Linux laptop to buy. And of course, we know there are a lot of good Linux laptops to buy. There's a lot of great ones from Lenovo. There's a lot of great ones from our friends over at System76. There's a lot of great laptops from our friends at Dell. And Dell has released a specific machine, the Dell Precision 5510, which actually, after we've scheduled the interview, is now been replaced with the 5520, but it's basically the same machine. This is Dell's attempt, a successful attempt, I should add, at a MacBook Pro killer. So a lot of people have compared the XPS series to the MacBook Pro. And that is an unfair comparison because there is no dedicated GPU in the XPS. It's all Intel graphics. And I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine that said, listen, I would love to use this XPS, but it is so intensive that the processes that i'm doing are so intensive it kicks us fans up and, it, and it's been so loud and it's very difficult to use this thing in replacement of my macbook pro and uh, as i was talking to this gentleman and he said i i have this precision series this 5510 which is the predecessor to the 5520 and it's a very very powerful machine it's literally a drop-in replacement for the macbook pro i'd like to come on the program to talk about it now this guy is a huge linux enthusiast he has 24 he has a 24 year career in the information technology he lives in the dc metro area and uh, he's currently working as a cybersecurity expert which means the guy knows about linux in addition to just being an enthusiast right this guy is using this stuff day in and day out um he has developed on linux as well as mac os so he is a really great guy to be able to make some comparisons and uh he's primarily using Linux for Python development and open source security tools for his penetration job. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as I was, as I was looking through all of the things that this guy has done, I thought, yeah, absolutely. This, this guy really adds some value to, to the show. So we're going to invite him on Mr. Ludwin good. Welcome to the ask Noah show. Hello. Can, can you hear me? I sure can, sir. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. I yes. Really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to be here. So, uh, give me the uh, give me the fifteen second elevator uh, elevator pitch, as it were. You're you're shopping for a laptop. 
you uh, you've used Mac OS, you've used a MacBook Pro, so you are familiar with what good hardware feels like and acts like. What drove you to Dell? What drove you to the 5510? Well, my 2012 MacBook was aging, and uh, we had, you know, basically, or I had actually just swapped out the hard drive and the, and the memory and things like that, and and I felt like uh, after listening to a lot of the the shows, especially you know Jupiter Broadcasting shows network, I felt like it was time to to look for a replacement, and I really wanted it to be all Linux. So I, I was paying attention to System76 to Dell. And to, and, and to other a couple other ones as well, but uh, the, the Dell won me over in the end. A lot of people would tell you that development, security, penetration testing, all of those things could be done on a MacBook, on Mac OS. Why Linux? Why take a chance on Linux, especially for that amount of money? I mean, the, the, the 5510, now the 5520, it's not a cheap machine. You could buy a MacBook Pro for the same amount. Why, why the Dell? Well, a lot of the tools, especially wireless tools, really run better natively on a Linux instead of trying to run through a virtual machine. Mm. Uh, they're not necessarily supported directly on Mac OS. And as Mac OS begins to distance themselves from using things like X server, so they use X quartz as their X server and things like that. You know, they use the GCC compiler, but they tweaked it to be, you know, a little bit Mac specific. And, and in the eventual replacement or, or uh, migration of Mac OS to possibly its own CPU architecture, the support, native support for the underlying BSD kernels and things like that will be very, very limited. And it will be hard for Linux tools to, to actually work correctly on them. Are you worried that Apple is taking a different direction with their operating system? Are they looking more towards the iOS and iPad, iPhone infrastructure rather than the actual desktop, laptop computer systems? Not at all, because I think it gives Linux and, and uh, operating uh, um, operating systems like Linux a better chance uh, to to survive, actually, and to actually thrive. So I, I, I like Mac for what it can do, what it does. It's basically a creative type operating system you can create content very easily on a mac you can now do that on linux as you demonstrated at southeast linux fest and things like that but um, but for the most part you and chris of course uh for the most part uh no uh let them go in that direction that's where they make their bread and butter they've been very successful with it uh if i need a powerful photo editing software or, or video editing software the mac is still in consideration but guess what there are a lot of other great open source tools out there that can can fill the fill the the, the requirement so you brought up southeast linux fest i i, I don't uh, i'll try not to break my arm reaching over too far to pat myself on the back but what he's talking about is this year at Southeast Linux Fest, we took an all Linux system. We took feeds from every conference and presenter hall, and we streamed all of those live uh, using Linux and Linux hardware. Uh, brought that back into the studio over here at the Asnoa show. We did some processing to it. We sweetened up the audio a little bit, and then we sent it back out. And uh, it's something that no other conference has done to the scale and, and, and to the way that we've done it. And uh, it sounded absolutely fantastic. And... Um, and I've, I have used, and, and now Lagoon is using that as an opportunity to say you can do creative things on Linux, which is, I mean, it's always been somewhat of a kind of a ridiculous argument because I, we, and I, we, I've been producing stuff on Linux since 2015. Uh, this entire show has been produced on Linux, has been since day one. I've never even considered using anything else, and I've never really had a problem. I think this show sounds better than most of the uh, most of our competitors that are using proprietary alternatives. So, And I'm, I'm not even in the studio today. Uh, so, but so, t what what operating system did you? I mean, obviously, some form of Linux. What form of Linux did you use, though? What what distro did you use? What version? On the laptop or in general? Or well, like both. both. Give me both. What was your preference, and then what did you go with <laughs> on this laptop? If they're different. Okay. So as of now, I have not altered the oper the original operating system. It is uh, really? Ubuntu uh, fourteen oh four. I do plan on uh, upgrading the operating system. I did some research, especially I actually had some conversation with Barton George. I had him on the show before. Uh, the actual upgrade to Linux, uh, to Ubuntu 16.04 uh, is not necessarily supported on the 5510. So, uh, but they say, you know, hey, 
throw caution to the wind. It should it should be all right. It should right. go. So, uh, but so uh, you, you I was st- delayed. Hold on, hold with on a my, second, though. Oh, you stop. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I just I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. You, you know, you're using Ubuntu 14.04. That's fine and well. It's the LTS. It's supported for five years. So, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 2019, right? We've got updates for that's fine. But you didn't reinstall the operating system that Dell shipped it with. You you kept that, that operating system. That is correct because there were some drivers and things like that that I was concerned that I would not get if I use uh, Ubuntu 16.04 or, or perhaps even now 18.04. So I wanted to make sure that Dell had some type of repositories available uh, f- to support the laptop. And, and that's what you're going to get when you, you, you look at the developer series of laptops from Dell is that they really kind of stick the, the repository to the, to the one that they've issued with the laptop. They, they necessarily, at, at, from what I can tell, don't necessarily recommend upgrading to the latest and greatest right. uh, because of that. No, you're right. And I'll give you a, a, a specific example. If anybody's looking for it is the trackpad drivers. On the stock Sputnik install of Ubuntu, it supports resting your thumb on the trackpad. No other Linux distro that I have ever used, up to and including the, if you were install stock 1404, 1504, 1604, whatever, on these Dell laptops will actually support resting your thumb on there. That's just one example of many. There are some downsides, though. Um, so with the Dell specific distro, your the uh, the super key does not work to activate the Unity heads, you know the uh, the Unity launcher menu. Have you found that to be an issue at all? Yes, I I, I do find that to be an issue. Mm. Did you uh, did you go through and because it's it's a it's a pretty if you Google it, there's actually a pretty simple fix for it, and there's uh, there's some legal reasons as to why they had to disable that. Did you bother to do that, or were you like I can just click on the button? No, I could just click on the button for now. So so again to finish up your question, my my sure. overall. Uh, I had I had bought a, a one of the things I really like about this is that it uses the NVMe SSD versus the traditional SATA SSD. So I really like that. That was the default drive. The hardware supported. I really like that. That was a differencing factor from that versus the XPS series of laptops, right? So right. Uh, I actually had actually bought one and was hoping to use it on a, a I was going to build another Linux machine and, and have it NVMe compatible with the X29 299 uh, chipset. But I said, you know what, I'll just take the $1,000 and, and put it into a laptop. That way I can dual boot Kali Linux and Ubuntu 1804 and I can troubleshoot from there or fix it or configure it from there. Uh, and then if something goes really, really wrong, I can just swap the drive back out and put it back in. So that's one of the major reasons why I bought this particular laptop. I love it. I love it. So the uh, the 5510, 15-inch display, right? Yes. And you got a 256-gig MVNE drive? Yep. Uh, quad-core CPU. You got the NVIDIA dedicated graphics, USB 3.0, USB-C. That's an interesting discussion. Now, the USB-C on the 5510, that is a true lightning port, yes? I, You know, I believe so. Uh, the, it comes with the Ethernet dongle. That's the USB-C. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and interesting, uh, real quick, I would say this. I actually crashed the thing. I, I, I had to reboot it from start like three days after I got into it <laughs> and realized that you actually need the the uh, the uh, the USB uh, to Ethernet dongle <laughs> to reinstall the operating system. So I was really, like, hmm, yeah, yeah. So if you if you break the OS and you have to reinstall it, and actually do a recovery. Uh, you definitely need because you need it. It doesn't know the Wi-Fi drivers and it needs to pull it from the repo. So the best way to pull it is to actually just connect it to an Ethernet port and connect it to a, some switch or router in your home and and let it finish installing those drivers. Chat room is correct to me there there we're I, I meant to say thunderbolt i apologize but yours has the little lightning bolt uh thing next to yes. the okay yes. so yeah so it is a true thunderbolt display if you want more information about that we'll have a link in the show notes where we break down exactly the difference between pure usb c oh, and, oh and no uh, I, I yeah go ahead I, I i meant to correct that that is an hdmi port it wasn't a thunderbolt port my look careful look at the look next to the uh, usb c uh, if you have it in front of you next to the usb yes port it does just, yes it does have yeah, a okay. thunderbolt yes okay okay yeah, yeah. yeah. so yes so yeah, it has thunder, yeah. <laughs> so yeah you're right yeah it has thunderbolt so and we'll have a link if you if you're confused about the difference between pure usb c and thunderbolt then uh, we'll have a link for you in the show notes where we break that down for you so what was the computer that you used before you bought this one 
Uh, it's a 2012 MacBook Pro that I actually bought used. I bought it two years used uh, from the, uh, what do you call it? Whatever their shop is online. Save, uh, Save Max or whatever? Oh, okay. Refurbished, the refurbished stuff, yeah. I got you. And then we gutted it with the memory and the, and the, and the, and the disk drive and put in SSDs and, and uh, Corsair memory. So I've, ha I've had it since 20, uh, I've had it since 20, I want to say 2012. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, 2014. 2014 yeah. yeah, yeah, 2014. And uh, I actually took it in the other day because uh, this will be the last year they'll service it. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, I want you to replace my battery. And Really? Kind of Apple won't yeah. service after a certain amount of time, huh? Yep, yep. Wow. And that's kind of been in the news lately. <laughs> I don't know if you've been tracking I, it. No, I, I yeah. hadn't seen that. I, I have yeah. a I have a Dell Inspiron that's, uh, I think, 18, 16 years old, <laughs> something like that. And we went to do a uh, our 10-year anniversary of the Linux Action Show. And I sent it in to Dell, and they put uh, they upgraded the memory and and put a new Wi-Fi card in it for me. So Dell will service their machines pretty much indefinitely as long as I can still get parts for them. What now I will say they they will service it, but it won't cost it will cost you more money to get it oh, fixed after a certain amount of time. So, sure, yeah, so no, that yeah. makes sense. So yeah. what did you uh, what why did you purchase this? What 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 all are you doing with it? What the, what's your day to day work case look like for this uh, for this fifty five? It's a very nice machine. Yes. Um, actually, the, the display is gorgeous. I do want to say this. It's very thin and very light. It's about a pound and maybe a quarter lighter than my MacBook Pro. Wow. And I, I really I really like it uh, uh, as far as the style. The keyboard actually is almost identical that to that Mac. But for a daily driver, uh, right now, I am really just doing some, a little bit of code development, tweaking of stuff. I'm testing certain applications like, you know, newer versions of like things like MMAP or Bro or something something like that. I'm doing a little bit of photo editing. I'm, I'm, I loaded some HDR software. I do like to do that on the Mac, and but I'm also uh, using the raw files on, on the laptop itself mm -hmm. and comparing to that to that and to my, my custom built Linux machine, which is a little bit of a monster. Mm -hmm. It's a 3700K. Uh, um, just just every, everything that I do, I've, I've done, I'm beginning to do all of the social media stuff. I loaded the Telegram app. I've loaded uh, a couple of other social media apps on here just to kind of get me in the transition of moving uh away from this i will be presenting uh in various you know either local conferences here in the dc area or or at work or something like that so i i use this i, I think it is chinese but the wps software it's an so it's a uh, word processor presentation spreadsheet it's basically windows uh, uh office uh, for Linux, and I think it's Chinese own, but you know, but hey, it works really, really good. Right. So I've I've actually been doing some presentation, uh, developing presentations for that. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, to use it in, in in at a like a what we call the B sides conferences. They're the B side security conferences. They're all over the country, actually all over the world. So as I'm I'm doing my research, I can you know if I'm I don't have to be tied to booting up my Mac, loading up a virtual machine you know, doing all this other stuff, I can just, you know, bring my, bring this book with me, uh, this now laptop with me. Uh, eventually it'll actually do a boot. Hopefully, uh, that'll be the second phase of the project. It's probably going to happen in the spring. I'm, I'm sorry, in, in August. Uh, and, and, um, the other thing is for wireless uh, capture the flag competitions. It's something we we really like to do. Uh, you know, learning about Wi-Fi, learning about signals and radio and things like that. Uh, Wi-Fi competitions are really really good if you have a Linux machine uh, ready to go. And actually, this one supports uh, the uh, AC uh, spec as well, so they'll be equally uh, beneficial. So. Um, I'm hoping that Kali Linux will run on it uh, very well with all uh, the the tools, the wireless tools that we need for the competitions. So uh, that I'm gonna swap the NVMe out here, basically uh, probably next month because the uh, B size DC conference will be in October. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome, and I, I have I have every reason to suspect that it will run just fine with Kali Linux. You know, the nice thing about Linux is all of the drivers are in the kernel. They're not uh, they're not user land side. So if it runs on on uh, on Ubuntu fourteen oh four, it's probably going to run just fine on Kali. Hey uh, Lagoon, tell me, is there something about this machine? Anything that you don't like about it? Anything that uh, that people should be aware or know, you know, to be a to to do their due diligence before they go out and drop like two grand on this thing? Well, um, 
there are two things and one i just discovered when i was setting up for the show earlier uh the first thing is that the trackpad is really overly sensitive i it, it throws the mouse a pointer everywhere it kind of forces me to use a, a, a mouse uh the, and i've tried some bluetooth mouses and they kind of they work really well but they don't auto connect if you put the laptop in into sleep mode so peripheral uses and the trackpad uses is very very uh, uh uh interesting i should say and sometimes annoying but mm -hmm. it does work fairly well mm -hmm. um the ability for me to use the external monitor was working, and I think something's going on with that. Maybe I, I'll call back in in the next couple of months <laughs> so you can help me with that after I load 16.04 or something. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I had an issue because the power setting was set to sleep when the when the uh when the lid is shut. If you use it in if you hook up an external monitor to, uh, to it it'll, it just won't connect so you have to go in there and turn it off and make sure that that uh is not in sleep mode and then and then i had some issues uh getting the nvidia uh set up to say use the monitor as the main monitor because i want to keep my uh my book closed i don't want to use it as a second monitor so there are some convenience issues i should say that uh that are for that i've seen so far uh i do think that maybe the uh the the capability of switching from the intel graphics to the nvidia graphics could be a little bit better maybe that's changed in 1604 and 1804 um software wise i've, I've i'm sorry uh video wise i've seen a little bit of of shearing and tearing when you move a window so that's been something that i've been interested in uh trying to figure out what's going on with there and then the other thing that I don't like is you can't really upgrade the OS. Uh, you can't even upgrade the kernel. So uh, they've locked it to where you, you can stay on 4.4 for the Ubuntu, I guess. And uh, so, like I said, um, those are those are the things. But they to me, they're not like minor, but they're not a showstopper. Yeah, sure. It machine. doesn't stop you from getting the work done. Yeah, that's interesting. I will tell you that uh, one of the huge selling points for 1804 and I think anybody that's reviewed the distro has talked about this, is they have done some massive work to the Bluetooth stack. So when you get to the point that Dell supports you installing 1804 on that machine, I think what you're going to find is a lot of those issues that you're struggling with, at least on the Bluetooth side, are going to go away. Awesome, awesome. Actually, I got a Zotac uh, uh, Z-Box M. 360 or something like that mi360 sure. with 1804 and it's running like a champ yeah uh when i when i had 1604 on the intel nook i had all kinds of power and bluetooth issues so so i i, I need to upgrade the, the nooks but the zotac z box is uh, actually a nice little small computer that was seems to be very powerful at this point are you comfortable sharing with us what you paid for it oh oh yeah yeah sure so um on the laptop uh was on sale right after christmas it was really really uh i dare to say kismet that i found it but i really <laughs> got it for 950 bucks it no. was 50 percent no off. no way 900 no there's no way that's like a yes. two thousand dollar computer that's a that's a two thousand dollar plus like a twenty four hundred dollar computer <laughs> But it, the, the interesting thing about it, if you go through the developer's site, it's are you pulling the, my leg the, right the, now? I, I I I'm not pulling your leg. If you go through the developer's site, um, uh, the, 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 the first option was Windows 10, right? Right. And then the fourth option is Ubuntu 14.04. So when you select Ubuntu 14.04, which is what you really want, it knocked a hundred dollars off. So that's why it was a hundred dollars. I mean, I don't care about the hundred dollars. How, how did you get them to knock off a thousand dollars? Where'd that? I mean, I think we. That's Dell. That's what they do. They, I guess they they saw that the writing was on the wall, and they were going to come out with the next generation and the generation after that, and they they just kind of super discounted it. You know, I got twenty percent off my ThinkPad because Lenovo screwed it up four <laughs> times, four <laughs> freaking times, and I thought I got a good deal. You got a, you got, you got Dell to knock off fifty percent off that thing. Man, yeah. that is a great deal. At more than 50%. Well, it, it, it was. So I, I would suggest to you that when when the end of the year comes around, <laughs> maybe the 50 divide 20 will be 50% off, you know, <laughs> at that time of the year. You just order it in January <laughs> for 50% off. Because, uh, yeah, when, we, when, I, when I was talking to you uh, about the show, I actually looked at the prices of the other ones. 
and the 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 5520 and the 5530 that just was recently announced uh so yeah base price it's still like you said about fifteen hundred dollars for the default configuration so right you know it's right like, you wow. you sounds like you've decked that thing out a little bit so talk to me about the 5520 and 5530 if i'm if i'm in the market for a precision what what is the advantage of the 5520 or the 5530 over the what you have the 5510 uh, the the advantage is one the display I think has is it does have a higher resolution I think it's 4K at the that they advertise as a, as a as a base model uh, they still offer by default the <laughs> a rotational drive which was um, which was stunning because I could have sworn when I when I got this one the NVMe was the default drive um, the the of course a higher CPU support higher memory support. Uh, is I think they're on the on the Q series or the HQ series. Uh, no, I'm sorry, they're on the eighth generation uh, mobile processors for for the 5520 and 5530. Mm. Um, Aside from that, uh, the these these series, the Precision series, have the Infinity Edge display. I have uh, on the other new developer, newer developer series. Uh, I they, they do not have the Infinity Edge display, so I was kind of disappointed in that. I thought they would make that in, the Infinity Edge display uh, standard across all, all a lot of their laptops, but they only let that be for the fifty five ten in, in the XPS. So you know, huh. it's like, I wonder if they just can't fit all of those electronics. And, and the, you know, if they need more to dissipate more heat, if you've got, you know, this display right. that has dedicated graphics and all that, I wonder if they just couldn't fit that in a, a chassis that small. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing is that they actually, the, I, I guess people rallied and say, we really want to have an ethernet port. We don't want to have a dongle. So, you know, the th machine's going to be thicker because it has to have an ethernet port in it. So on, on the 77, the 7530 series, uh, there's an Ethernet port in the middle in the back of the laptop, which I thought was kind of annoying because it makes it look like a little wedge now instead of a flat, you know, beautiful machine. So, <laughs> yeah, but you know what, though, I tell you what, I would take and I was I haven't I hadn't looked at the 7530. So I'm just looking at it now. And this is a great looking machine. This may be my next machine, if only because I absolutely have to have a wired Ethernet uh, jack for my my of day course. job. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know Lenovo tried to split that. They tried to split it by just saying, "Well, we're going to give you a dongle. It'll be a proprietary dongle, but it will pass through the MAC address of the computer." And I'm that is great. I'm really happy that Lenovo thinks that there's a lot of security in Mac stickies on switches, and so that's still a thing that we do in the business world. I'm glad that that they think that, and I'm glad. Yeah, that and I, I I thought that the the <laughs> purists like you would like to have the old stuff. You know, oh, if you get an RS two thirty two port, you know, you you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be you on know, it right I, I don't know if you're joking with me or not but you know the truth of the matter <laughs> the truth of the matter is man we do a lot of cisco catalyst switches that all have um serial ports on them and i do carry a serial dongle with me because i have to be able to do that yeah yeah the other day we had this seventy five thousand dollar mass storage drive coincidentally from dell and we still couldn't get the serial port to work but we had to go hunting around the entire building to find a, a computer that had a serial report on it. So, <laughs> that's, that, you know, absolutely. It's, that's it's, absolutely awesome, man. I, yeah, <laughs> I love this. I love what Dell is doing. I love that every time a machine comes out, it seems like they make it better and better. I love that Linux is becoming more accepted into the mainstream. And I love that there are people like you that were Mac users that were using the MacBook Pro and have looked up and said, all right, it's time for me to buy a piece of hardware that respects my freedom, that re respects my privacy and that uses an operating system that I can fundamentally grow with. And all of the tools that I really need are there. I just have to be willing to use them. So, I, you know, more power to you for being able to do that. People want to find more about Lagoon. Where can they go? Uh, actually, um, I, I'm on LinkedIn, Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Goon in the D.C. area. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I don't really have a social presence because I'm so busy. I've, I've just me and my wife recently had a, a, a baby boy. And so he's taken a lot of my time. Uh, uh, I'm on in I'm on the Twitters as Infiltrate. Uh, I N.F.L.T.R. 8. Uh, if you want to, to holler and, and and if you have any other questions uh i can give you my email lagoon7 at gmail.com so uh that's that's me right now i i i wish i had the time and to to do what you guys do at jupiter broadcast but uh i figured i would contribute by giving you 
my life lessons today. And uh, I do hope to see and meet you and Chris one of these days soon, hopefully at the next South East Linux Fest. I did plan on going, but I, I uh, 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 something came up and, and I was able to go. But hopefully next year. Yeah, yeah, I tell you what, next year is going to be the year to be there. I, uh, without, again, without patting myself too far on the back, I, uh, I got a promotion. I'm going to officially be staff next year. I'm actually flying out at the end of the month um, to plan Southeast Linux Fest, and we are going to put together some really, really cool things. From a media perspective, um, I've got some really cool plans that I want to put into place. And so if you're going to be there, uh, next year is going to be the year to do it. If you can't make it, I'm going to make sure that anybody that can't be there uh, has an experience to remember that you're going to be able to participate remotely because we did we did a little foray into it, and it turned out to be huge. Everybody really liked it, and uh, we're going to double down on that this year. Back to the phones again. You can join the program, 1 855 450 NOAH. That's 855 450 6624. Or send an email to live at asknoahshow.com. James calls from Idaho. Hey, James, welcome to the Ask Noah Show. Hey, Noah. Sir. I'm going to kill the radio. Um, um, I haven't switched over the new the Ubuntu 18 yet, but I've, because I've been tested, but they tell me that the GKSU is no longer a thing. Is there going to be something that replaces that? Or Yes, there is. Uh, the replacement for GK Pseudo is something called PK Exec. So it's all being done with Policy Kit now. Um, but the basic premise is still there. They've just, you know, it's been augmented for security and updates and, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to f- find the that information unless you feel like you mail me a link or something. Yeah, I can do that. I'll have a link for you in the chat room. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because I'm, um, oh yeah, if you have time, I'd like to know, probably off there, um, talk to you about what it would cost to get some help from your, your group or something on, uh, setting up my machine because I'm still not getting LVM real well, and I want to use two drives, one with LVM and one which is a SSD, which I don't want touched. Sure. For boot purposes only on the SSD. And I know that and everything comes for free, so, yeah, I need to figure out what you would what it would cost and all that junk, and can you do it if I said help? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the truth, the, the weird thing is about stuff like that is uh, when it comes to remote remote helping, you know, we do a lot of managed services remotely. I mean, managed services have just taken off. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'll level with you guys. Uh, you know, we have found our limitations there in certain circumstances. We've found that there are just certain circumstances, certain situations that you really do need to have somebody on the ground. Uh, reinstalling an operating system and configuring local storage and stuff like that from scratch can be a difficult thing to do. And if you're not prepared for that, uh, you know, you could run into problems, but, um, yeah, you know, you can always give customer care a call at one eight six six. I'm sorry. That's, uh, yeah. When uh, call seven Oh one four zero two twenty three hundred. 2300. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there are certainly, there are certainly things that we can do, certainly things that we can't, but we can always offer you some advice. We can always offer you, um, you know, a guide on how to do it or what we would do if we were sitting there with you. Again, one eight five five four five zero no. That's eight five five four five zero six six two four. The email live at asknoahshow dot com. Before we get out of here today, I do want to make another plug. Thank you so much to everybody that has submitted a logo for our logo competition contest. If you're not familiar with that, Altspeed Technologies is going to be ten years old this year, and uh, or next year rather. And um, as part of our 10-year anniversary, we want to refresh our logo. So if you have graphic design abilities, or even if you don't have graphic design abilities and you want to give it a shot, send us an email to logo at altaspeed.com. We'd love to take a, a we'd love to take a look at what you have to offer. Uh, take a look at our old logo and see if you can use that as some inspiration. We'd like people to still recognize our brand, but we would like to update and and refresh the logo also hello to the chat room you can join the chat room by joining irc.geekshed.net pound jupiter broadcasting those guys are in there i'm watching everything you guys say i had an issue with my quasal core it crashed so i'm i'm using the web uh thing today but i don't uh, have my authentication stuff there so it keeps logging me out and so i haven't really been on top of that and i apologize for that but uh, make sure to check out the logo uh, if you want more information head over to podcast.asknoahshow.com there is a we'll have uh, a link in the show notes that talk about the very specifics 
about contributing to the logo agreement. We'd love to have you participate. Love to have that done by somebody here in the community. That uh, that would be best, I think. Hey, guys, did you know the show is available as a downloadable podcast? To subscribe to the feed or download the latest episode, visit podcast.asknoahshow.com. There you'll find not only the latest episodes, but all of the articles and material referenced in this episode. You can get the latest, of course, by following us on Twitter at Ask Noah Show. The Ask Noah Show continues next Tuesday. It's Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central. A huge thanks to Vox Telesis for providing our phone systems, better producer, and Sarah, our call screener. This hour of the show may be over, but there's plenty of more content for you 24-7 at asknoahshow.com. Mm-hmm.